Hi, I'm Andrew, and I'm a software engineer at Pixar. I'm going to show you some of the hair workflows we developed for Incredibles 2. Someone's calling! Switching over! Hey, On a shot like this, the hair helps tell the story, so it's got to be perfect. On previous Pixar films, a hair animator would have only been able to interact with a few hundred of these sparse guide hairs, only guessing what the impact would be on the several hundred thousand real hairs in the final frames. But on Incredibles 2, we made sure that animators had access to full fidelity hair at all stages of the pipeline, making their job a lot easier. There's no baking or recording step required to see the full fidelity hair. It's just always there and always live for you to edit if you want it. Some parts of Elastigirl's hair are procedural, like the scraggle, and some parts of it are hand sculpted or simulated with physics. These blue guides are sculptable, and as you can see, you see the result immediately. Here's an older, cuddlier version of the raccoon that fights Jack-Jack. This is what a groomer would see. A groomer is one of our hairstyling artists. Every single hair that would be in a final frame is visible here. All this hair is generated live in Presto as a result of running a stack of hair operators that's visible on the left there. That stack of operators is responsible for the scruffy look on what would otherwise be a smooth coat of hair. Let me just toggle those on and off to show you what I mean. Let's play with the clump operator next. The clump is set to zero overall effect right now, so let me gradually increase that. And you can see the clumps start to come in, in a region of effect controlled by a texture. I can also control the profile, the shape of each clump, with this spline parameter here. A lot of the operators have parameters like this, some numbers or some splines or some textures. Keeping them simple means that they're very efficient and can be fast enough to run on all the hairs on the entire character interactively. The benefits of interactively editing hair become really clear when it comes to sculpting hairstyles. Here I'm trying to edit Violet's hairline a little bit and as I do so, I'm accidentally introducing a little sparse patch uh, that you can kind of see her scalp through, and that's obviously not what I want. Uh, but in the old system, I would have had to wait for a render to come back before even knowing that I'd made this mistake. Here, I've added a scraggle operator to the end of Void's operator stack. And as I turn it up, the effect is not just interactive, I would call that real time. And it is so fast because I added it to the end of the stack. And Presto knows that anytime I edit any parameter of an operator, it only needs to rerun that operator and any operators that came after it. So in this case, it means it does not have to scatter hair roots on the scalp or grow the hairs along the guides. All it has to do is take the clean hair, apply the scraggle, and that's it. Character animators need the hair to work at high frame rates so that they can focus on their timing and performance. We accomplish this by processing the deformation of the hair on the GPU using the Hydra rendering engine. This allows us to hit 24 FPS in both playback and direct manip. For character animation workflows, we don't usually show the full fidelity hair, but it is always available by just turning up the level of detail setting. If you'd like to see more demos and get a lot of technical explanation, uh, come to see our talk at SIGGRAPH 2018.